I was enamored by tech. Yeah. And, and it was my job to bring him to the world. And that next morning, he calls me and says, check your bank account. And I go check my bank account. He deposited a million dollars wow. into my account. Wow. No paperwork, <laughs> no contract. And who did this again? Saram, Mark Saram. Okay, okay. Just From shot a million dollars into my account uh -huh. and said, go do what you got to do with Tech9. What's up, world? It's your boy, Big Court, from the Holding Court Podcast. What's up with your producer, Ken? Man, it's a long day. It's a long day. <laughs> it's really been a long day. Interesting yeah. day. Uh, what's up, Rachel Renee? You know, it's good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm having a good time. Yeah, my oldest daughter in here representing. Man, today we have a special guest in the house, man, Sorry. and I don't say that lightly, man. Uh, man, behind the scenes, if you... And see, if you was buying a lot of music in the 90s, early 2000s, back when you bought physical sales and you look at the credits, then most likely you'd see his name in there. Uh, man has done a lot of stuff in the music industry, a lot of big moves. He even just told me, I don't do this type of shit. I'm a behind the, behind the scenes dude, but I'm like, bro, we got to tell your story. You have done a lot of cool shit. Man, we got the, the is it, would it be fair to call you an impresario? I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you decide that, man. <laughs> okay, we'll say the, the you know executive, music executive, and consultant, and music impresario, Dave Weiner. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entertainment entrepreneur. I call entertainment myself. entrepreneur. Yes. That's yeah. what we do. All right, Mr. Dave Weiner. What's good? What's pleasure brother? to be Welcome. here, man. Welcome. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, nice to likewise. Meet Appreciate you uh, coming, man. Especially such short notice. Well, with the history we got, that's right. History, even <laughs> history, I wasn't even aware of with that, Kansas City and everything. That's you right. Know, we crossed paths. It's many funny times. how I came full circle huh right exactly yeah, yeah. how we reconnected even reconnected. stranger exactly standing at elementary school <laughs> at an elementary school <laughs> how we know each other man you look exactly. familiar exactly exactly in woodland hills man our kids went to school together yeah yeah so we see each other every morning yeah every <laughs> every, every afternoon every pickup. <laughs> yep. for the pickups yep. the yeah the two guys standing out at standing the woodland out. hills yeah, elementary school like, yeah what, you, what do they do yeah yeah <laughs> man that's dope that's dope. talking about first world problems <laughs> 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 At our Calabasas. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's right. That's right. Um, man, I kind of want to, uh, cause I, I know more about your, 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 your professional life, but I kind of just want to just a little bit touch on, um, uh, where'd you grow up? Here in LA. Okay. Grew up on the West side of LA, mm -hmm. went to uni high and uh, pretty much lived my whole life here. Spent some time in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, went to Arizona ASU for a couple of years, but mm -hmm. otherwise LA. Okay, oh, you partied at ASU. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. That's, that's why I had to leave. The ASU is known <laughs> as the party school. Yeah, I lasted a year and a half. Yeah, and then uh -huh. I was tapped out and started in the mailroom at Priority. Wow, wow. Yeah. So, what hip hop? I mean, what were some of your musical influences uh, growing up? I mean, back going back to the the beginning, man. Whether it was um, whether it was Beasties or mm -hmm. Run DMC or I mean it was all Dana Dane had a big impact Dana on me. Dana Dane, yeah, you know, he's yeah. A good friend now. Shout out to Dana you know, Dane, you know, yeah, Cinder Fella. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I got into it um, and always was working on my car and trying mm -hmm. to get sounds in the car and house mm -hmm. speakers in yeah. the back of the station wagon. <laughs> Don't and, tell me you was one of them to put house speakers yeah, in the car. Yeah, take them out and put them on the roof at every house party. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. We yeah. definitely had the party mobile. Uh -huh. So. Um, so yeah, just, I guess the mid eighties is really okay. when I started getting into it. Let me ask you, cause I know we, I, I believe we're probably close in age. Did you like most of us before hip hop became prominent, right? Uh, were you listening to like, uh, culture club and REO speed wagon and, and, I mean, and shit I, like that? I did listen to a lot of pop mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, um, and it was really the West coast. I mean, even though I listened to a bunch of East coast rap when, mm -hmm. you know, ice T and mm -hmm. NWA and easy and. Mm -hmm. They really started representing the West Coast. That's mm -hmm. when it really became, I got consumed mm -hmm. by West Coast hip hop, you mm -hmm. know, and ditching school, you know, mm -hmm. to be there at Tower or Warehouse on yeah. Tuesday to get that record when it dropped. And yeah, so, um, yeah, it was really the West Coast rap that, mm -hmm. that, that took me away from everything else. And, and uh, then that's, you know, ironically where I end up working. Did so. you ever have aspirations of being an artist? N no. Mm -hmm. No, or I had no aspirations of being in the record business either. Really? Didn't even know that was an option. Really? So what did I, you want to do initially? I knew I'd be in business. Okay. You know, so I was I was in that direction at school, but mm -hmm. um, I was blessed to be able to go to school mm -hmm. and I wasn't taking advantage of it. I was, mm -hmm. you know, partying and mm -hmm. doing all the, the wrong or right stuff, whatever right. you want to call it. Right. 
And uh, I remember going to my folks and saying, let me take a break. I'm not appreciating this mm-hmm. opportunity. Let me go figure out mm-hmm. where I want to go so mm-hmm. I can come back and, and, and be focused. Okay. And uh, when that happened, there was an opening at the mailroom at Priority Records. Mm-hmm. And I went to school with um, one of the owner's nieces. Okay. So they were like, yeah, you should go check out that. And I was a huge NWA fan. So right. showed up for the interview, mm-hmm. got in the mailroom, thought I was going to show up to a company that was like the epicenter of mm-hmm. West Coast gangster rap. Right. And I was one of the few that actually got that shit when I was in there. Wow. So they were doing compilations. Okay. So you went to Priority. This was... This N- was... 91. 91. Yeah. Okay. So... Is this when was rap a lot over there? Um, not yet. <clears throat> okay. Not yet. Okay. I think they came over shortly thereafter. So at this point, they just had NWA, Easy E, right, and Cube okay. just broke. Yeah, with America. He was putting out death certificate okay. at the okay. time I started. Uh huh. Which was you know very controversial. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was it was exciting. What was what was the climate like up there at Priority Records during that time? Well, it was it was it was a bunch of folks that didn't understand rap, mm-hmm. which you would have thought, you know, otherwise. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then I got there, and I was like a fan. I was mm-hmm. a consumer. I was, you know, knew every mm-hmm. lyric, and they looked at me like, "Oh, you get this shit," you know? <laughs> right. Um, the owners understood it, or or did their best to understand it. Uh huh. Owners, as in Brian. Yeah, Brian, Brian and Mark Cerami, who okay. was his fifty fifty partner. Okay. He was my. I worked under Mark. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was my mentor, but he ended up having a stroke later on mm-hmm. in the '90s. So he oh, kind of okay. got forced into retirement, okay. and that's why most people know about Just Brian. Know Brian, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. So you. So what was? I'm curious. What was your job in the mailroom? Were you filling in fan mail or what? what I was, was. I was. I was doing A and R. Okay. Unofficial, mm-hmm. so no one knew what to listen to. Okay. And I still have my my log book, yeah. you know, from from ninety one. So you were getting the demos. Yeah, I was getting you know the. You click. probably got my I shit. Getting, I might <laughs> have it in there. Yeah, yeah, you got I my mean, shit I had a few Wu-Tang, times. I had a ton of shit there. <laughs> yeah. You know, going through going through my notes like, oh, damn, wow. you know, and see uh-huh. what I wrote about it, and then uh-huh. I take it back to the rock A and R guy and uh-huh. hand him, you know, the little uh-huh. uh, the little folder and say, you know, here's what you got, uh-huh. and um. And nothing, nothing really happened mm-hmm. as a result of you know. I would, I would deliver the mail. I'd go off to office, mm-hmm. and um, and then everyone would throw all whatever app demos came in my way, and I'd just be bumping it in the mailroom. Oh wow! You know, wow. and then um, and then when um, I got the opportunity to step into sales, mm-hmm. that's when I was out in the field and I was starting to meet artists. Mm-hmm. You know, Oakland, mm-hmm. Bay Area, Berkeley, Leopold, music people. Mm-hmm valley you mm-hmm. know um i don't know if you remember city hall records of course with uh walter, walter. yeah walter yeah. and mm-hmm. and robin yeah. and yeah. and then you know i was getting schooled by saint charles you saint know. charles from uh he put solar. Me in the game yep, yeah from solar yeah yep. 40s uncle yep taught mm-hmm. me taught me a lot I, I learned a lot from the right people at the <laughs> right. right time right just right place right time and nice and, and and a lot of passion did you ever were you able to were you ever able to really work with an artist when you were doing a and r before you got to the executive position like what artists did you kind of cherry pick and say hey that we knew about that that actually got a deal i mean the ones that <clears throat> kind of st- the, the first two i signed first was jt the bigger figure okay <laughs> All right. And uh, he was just coming off a song called "Game Recognized Game," yep. which was a big Bay Area yep. anthem. Yep. And um, and then I was I was um, I was still doing sales and mm-hmm. signing labels because mm-hmm. after I started meeting some of these independent artists in the Bay, mm-hmm. I came back to Brian at Priority did A and R mm-hmm. and promotion. Brian mm-hmm. Turner and Mark Cerami did sales distribution, mm-hmm. and that was a unique. The whole Priority Records distribution is kind of what opened up independent distribution for rap. Mm. Because we were the only distributor at the time and still to this date mm. that had major label backing of capital. Mm-hmm. So they would warehouse our product. They would ship our product. They would guarantee our receivables, mm-hmm. which was the biggest issue. So mm-hmm. if a record store didn't pay their bill, we still got paid. Mm. But we were the sales reps got you so we were the only label that did our own sales then delivered the orders back to Mm. capital because they didn't know they called it rap crap for real back in the day like it was total discrimination and wow you even like this shit and why are you selling it Mm -hmm. and i'm like wow you know and priority records was a compilation label Mm -hmm. you know they were doing rock of the 80s and country's greatest hits and And california raisins yeah and california raisins financed everything wow 
you know uh -huh. that 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 was so successful <clears throat> that that paid for the signing of nwa and mm -hmm. the growth of the label what made them uh you know pivot and, and open their minds to do nwa i think that the success of the raisins was so tremendous <clears throat> that when jerry heller brought the demo to mark and brian mm -hmm. it got their interest and mm -hmm. you know they were mark is definitely the disruptor between the two mm -hmm. and so he definitely saw something there mm -hmm. and you probably have to ask them who was really the one responsible yeah. for that decision yeah of taking on nwa but um jerry heller you know okay. was obviously the right the catalyst to that yeah. you know that's interesting that that again because some of the people listening the the young people they won't understand this question but back then <clears throat> It was all about an artist getting a deal and just right. getting signed. There was no there was no label or so. Would JT the bigger figure be one of the first kind of in in that era, or I should say maybe at, at on the West Coast to yes. do that? Yeah, because yeah. all you had was regionals. You had right. Selecto in the Midwest Selecto, and, yep. and Southwest, Southwest wholesalers down south exactly. and yeah. City Hall and yeah. Tower would buy direct. <clears throat> yeah, but they were the only chain that would buy direct. Then we had the wonderful Violet Brown at Warehouse. Violet Brown. Shout and Violet, Violet was the the best buyer yes in the game for urban music and right. she's you know she's <clears throat> single-handedly responsible for mm -hmm. a lot of what happened on the west mm -hmm. coast by opening up all mm -hmm. those 350 warehouse stores that's to right bringing in product that you know music plus wouldn't touch right. and even tower was like now nah, that shit's getting stolen from yeah because you, know? you had back then you had camelot records right and sam goody music -E and, yeah. And, yeah 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 but um yeah she fought for it yeah. and and you know <clears throat> i don't want to jump too far ahead but mm -hmm. it was the same way that master p was able to get the films mm -hmm. right the, you know he was the first one to do urban exactly. films with the and on so when we, when we shot on about it mm -hmm. and um and we had to go to the video buyer mm -hmm. and the video buyer is like i don't know you right. i don't know anything about you so we went to violet mm -hmm. said violet you know about yeah. us and, and she's she like yeah but i don't buy it. video and we're yeah. like well we need you to. Yeah. You know, yeah. he was very uh, convincing. Right. And um, yeah, so we convinced them it was it was music and not a film. Yeah. yeah. And they brought in a half million copies mm -hmm. and sold through them in mm -hmm. weeks. Let, let me ask you this real quick. What was it about JT, the bigger figure, and Get Low Records that you felt like, you know what, let me take this back to these guys. Right. This is outside the box. But I mean, let me, let me all of it. it I liked I liked what JT was doing. I mm -hmm. love what San Quinn was doing. Mm -hmm. Like I was a huge San Quinn fan. Mm -hmm. Seth the Gaffla, like yep. everything they were doing, the whole get low player mm -hmm. movement. Yeah. And where they were at in Fillmore. And I spent a lot of time with them up there in the Bay. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, they were they were impressive. How you did know? you being in LA? How did you get wind of what was going on? Because I was doing sales. Okay, so I'd be up there hanging out at Music People, mm -hmm. you know, with Jason Blaine and mm -hmm. RBL, and mm -hmm. you know, not too many label reps would go to Music People. Right. And, right. And the funny story about that is everyone always thought I was a cop because <laughs> i'd be pulling up i'd be pulling up in the rental yeah yeah you know and looking pretty casual unless it was like a suit and tie account yeah. which they were up in seattle uh-huh um so at first people were like standoffish but yeah. then you know every other week they'd see me back and yeah start asking questions and then yeah. the relationship started building people started trusting me oh nice nice so <clears throat> what at, at this time were you were you up there when ice cube uh did the the infamous you know, go bad on priority records. He need his money for his house when he tore up the. Office. Oh, I was the one who let him in. Oh shit! Yeah, I was at the I was at the phones. That was that was like my first month on the job. What happened? So the movie I showed in, it a certain way. But. Yeah, right. Um, so uh, I was in the mail room, and Marcella, the receptionist, mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember if she went to lunch or had to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. but she, I'd cover the phones for her, mm -hmm. and we didn't have security provision at the time. Mm -hmm. There was no bulletproof entrance mm -hmm. and all the things that happened right, right. down the line. And um, so I was covering the phones and I didn't hear Cube walk in. I just heard a, a, like a hard tap on the glass and I looked <laughs> up and it was Cube and three or four of his guys and, uh, and Lokes and, <laughs> you know, trench yeah, coats yeah. and not the normal Cube. Yeah. So I buzzed him in and again, no security provision mm -hmm. and, but knew something wasn't right. Yeah. And so um, they walked back to Brian's office and the screaming began mm -hmm. and the, the glass breaking and the shouting and mm -hmm. his receptionist uh, or assistant, I should say, Lillian Matulik, who's at Disney now, she mm -hmm. came running up, freaking out. Brian's getting attacked. Mm -hmm. 
So um, Brian's office was here and Mark's office were here and they're connected with a bathroom. Mm -hmm. So I jumped off the phone and ran into Mark's office and he's kind of like a hot-headed Sicilian, mm -hmm. you know, like wasn't wor worried about too much. Right. And, uh, and him and I ran into Brian's office and Cube's standing over Brian with a bat and yeah. his, his desk was all glass. Mm -hmm. And um, and he's yelling, you know, mm -hmm. I, I ain't got shit. Mm -hmm. Fucking easy, got everything. Mm -hmm. I can't even buy a house. You mm -hmm. know, he was fucking unloading, and mm -hmm. the the homies were in the the back just backing him up. Mm -hmm. At that point, Cube told Mark and I to get out. This between him and Brian. Mm -hmm. Mark said, "I'm Brian's partner. I ain't leaving." Dave, step out. So mm -hmm. I step outside, and at this point, the uh, security for it was in the CNN building. Okay, on Sunset and Coanga. Yeah. yeah, I know exactly. So you figure there's about. security in the yeah. CNN building. So they came walking up, you know, mm -hmm. and walked into the office like thumbs in the belt, <laughs> yeah. you know. And they came walking in, and I just stepped out of the office. And they're like, "Well, what do you need?" And I'm like, "You may want to sit this one out." Yeah, <laughs> you know. And they heard the glass break. Yeah. At this point, he's smashing the uh -huh. TV, smashing plaques on the wall. Yeah. He hit the glass desk, mm -hmm. and it bounced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't break. It would have, it would have fucked them up, if right? It, you know, right. If it would have broke, and then um, they came out, and I, you know, got out of their way, mm -hmm. went out in the lobby, smashed more mm -hmm. gold records. Um, a, a woman named Daria Kelly, who um, I did sales with at Priority, she schooled me on the sales game. Mm -hmm. She actually has that plaque mm -hmm. in her house, the one okay. the cube smashed up oh, really? in the lobby. Yeah, she's got. Is that. it still smashed? Though? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, she's got like the official smash. Okay, plaque. that's dope. So she's probably like, why'd you tell everyone, Dave? <laughs> Get the cat out the bag. Now they know. So, yeah, that was crazy. But, you know, I was 20, 21. Yeah. You know, I was, that was like. That did was you like, understand what his frustration was? I did mean, I, I did. Mm -hmm. and But I didn't really take a side. I was right. more just a witness to yeah. some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. And trying to figure out if this made sense for my life. Yeah, yeah. Like, what am I getting into here? Yeah. Like, on one hand, I probably shouldn't go back to work tomorrow. <laughs> on the other hand. It was exciting. She's kind of cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I cool. love Q. Like Ice I Cube just Q, came in and did know? some gangster yeah, shit. Like, like, I know like... every lyric of every song of everything he's ever done <laughs> yeah. and saw it go down. It was nuts. It's real. Yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. So. Did, did, so obviously they figured it out because he put out death certificate. Or was this, this was. Um, yeah, death certificate. I can't remember what happened first. Right. I think they probably happened right around the same time. Mm-hmm. Because that was the first album that came out when I was mm -hmm. there, and there was a lot of pushback. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. a lot of um, people striking out in front of the building, and right. the Simon Wiesenthal Center, and uh, right. Guardian Angels, and mm -hmm. LAPD. And yeah, it was, a, and we had a police station around the corner, mm -hmm. and they were they were mm -hmm. fucking with us, mm -hmm. the people that work there. Okay. So after you know putting out fuck the police, and, yeah. you know, so there was always this weird dynamic between. Hey. Yeah. priority employees and the cops around the corner right right wow. so yeah it was it was interesting that we were in the cnn building okay nice nice so <clears throat> with so you guys had you had nwa you had easy you had cube so right around that time ghetto boys comes yes out. Yeah. yeah so rap a lot right were you ever did you uh, i wasn't there i wasn't there like that was that was more Mark and Brian dealing okay. directly with uh, with Jay. Oh, okay. So you never got a chance to deal with Jay Prince. I so. did. I did a little bit. Okay. You know, there were a few times I got called into meetings mm -hmm. and and um, and heard some material. And mm -hmm. I remember, I remember, I can't remember what song it was. But there was a, a Lionel Richie sample in a song, and I pointed it out. And, uh, six feet deep. Is that what it was? Yeah. And yep. he and and Jay Prince looks over like, <laughs> who the fuck's this guy? How does he know that shit? You know, so. Yeah. And then we kind of built from there and we're yeah. still friends to this day. Okay. I know you had him on your show. Definitely, he's, he's, definitely. That's the OG. The OG. The like, OG. You know, that everyone can learn from. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So what what was the first I think Mind Playing Tricks on Me was the first hit. Massive. Hit. Yeah. Yeah. And then between the album cover with Bushwick getting shot yep. and <clears throat> sending the photographer down to get that mm -hmm. that photo and but mm -hmm. I was an outsider looking in. I wasn't uh, man I didn't sign it. I wasn't managing yeah. it. The so so at what point do you start moving up in the ranks to where you, because at some point you took the position as vice president, right? Yeah, of distributed labels. Yeah. So yeah. when, so as I'd be out doing sales from mm -hmm. Seattle to San Diego, I'm, you know, with J.O. in San Diego mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm with, you know, my folks in Seattle and the Bay and, mm -hmm. and then I would kind of figure out the hierarchy, come mm -hmm. back to the office and sit down with Mark and be like, man. 
I know Brian signs artists, but mm -hmm. we should be signing labels. Mm -hmm. You know, we can scale this business if we're not just super serving one artist, but mm -hmm. we're super serving a label. And since we have our own in-house distribution, mm -hmm. it was the first time artists were given the opportunity to have Nash, one distributor hit the nation. Right. Because you had to piecemeal it That's real. back in the day. That's real. And everything was a gatekeeper. Right. You couldn't just upload a song to a DSP That's right. and That's right. put it out on Spotify. There are 120,000 yeah. songs a day being dropped right now. Yeah. I wonder what the number was yeah. in 92 I mean, know, it on was a, a Tuesday. I mean, back then, you got to think, you had it was way more expensive because you had hard cost. And yeah. then you had lead time. So yeah. even you didn't want to over-manufacture. Exactly. You didn't even want to manufacture man, if you didn't have fans. Man, because if you fucked around and got 10,000 CDs from Rainbow, mm -hmm. you know, remember Rainbow <laughs> back then? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, you sell... 20 copies and you got a garage full of shit yeah you know? yeah and you and you're absolutely right that was that was very uh forward thinking of you because uh because i was doing independent distribution and you did you had to deal with yeah. southwest you had to deal with gonzalez for this mm -hmm. region you mm -hmm. had to deal with selecto i was even dealing with uh uh ground level if you remember yeah, them. I do remember yeah that. super d's down yeah, yeah in i remember LA. super d yeah, yeah for you sure. know so you had to deal with all these people just to get your shit kind of kind of out there yeah and mm -hmm. the game has changed yes and now, the yes. pros and cons to that it right? is pros and cons it, a lot I, of white noise now yeah a lot of white I, noise I, I think i like it now i think if i was doing it when i was young now i would thrive well, there's no excuses. There's no excuses. There's nothing that None. you can say that is the yeah. reason you don't do your shit. That's real. All you need is a phone. Yeah. That's it. Because you know, like I know, back then, videos, a cheap video yeah. would be $100,000, yeah. $150,000. Yeah. And that might have been, uh, was it 16, 16 millimeters? Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? While they're lying to you and telling you it's 35, <laughs> you're like, exactly. that looks like 16, bro. <laughs> I had a few of those arguments. Yeah, you know, so, uh, but at, at what point, so now you become a uh, vice president so who did you usher in now that you're vice president? Who who you had your fingerprints are on? Well, at that point I was putting the staff together while mm -hmm. still doing sales, but mm -hmm. it was apparent that I had to be replaced mm -hmm. in sales. And the mm -hmm. guy who replaced me is Brian Shafton, mm -hmm. who went on to mm -hmm. build RBC, which mm -hmm. was Run the Jewels, Chief yep. Keef, yep. 40. Right. He sold that to BMG back in 2018. So mm -hmm. we still work together to this day. We're still partners in nice. many ventures. And um after staffing, it was a matter of signing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Master P was the most relentless yeah. and, and the hardest working. Right. And right. the most focused out of everyone I was talking to. Of course, right. 40 was very impressive, but he had his own thing going. With Jive. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. already set up. Mm -hmm. He had a nice family around him, mm -hmm. a lot of information, a lot mm -hmm. of knowledge. Um, but, you know, P was kind of not in his mm -hmm. element because mm -hmm. I met him when he was still in the Bay. Okay. And it started getting funky with, you know, uh, mm -hmm. with, with, uh, with the loonies okay. and, and mm -hmm. when he was fucking around with ice cream man yeah. and they were so the you, first ice cream man. So and, you met him around what? 99 ways to die. Yeah. You know, trying to kill me. Yeah. Yeah. No, he put out nine. We went to NARM together. Okay. Him, Ron Spaulding, if you know that gentleman mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and P and I, the three of us went to NARM and that I think it was the week before he dropped nine, mm -hmm. uh, 99 ways to die. Mm-hmm. And he told me it would chart 25 yeah. on Billboard, and it charted 26. Wow. You know, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm showing all this to Mark, my, my boss. You know, I'm yeah. showing, like, man, this guy continues yeah. to deliver. And he was know? going through SMG at that time. Right? Yeah, and City Hall, okay, I think. Okay, and City Hall, right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. um, doing the same thing, just yep. kind of figuring it out. Mm -hmm. um, so, but his signature was different because mm -hmm. what impressed me about him was him. Mm. not his um not his art so to say yeah you know like, was like i was more to things but that 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 kind of molded how i've made a career mm -hmm. was working with jt and that crew mm -hmm. that were super um super involved on the artistic side mm -hmm. and just living in the studio and right. really making it about what was happening in the bay right and then you had p that was kind of more focused on a movement mm -hmm. and not as mm -hmm. much about the music Right, um, right. It's more about the branding. Yeah, and I wasn't, and honestly, I wasn't as impressed with the music. Mm -hmm. But stuff was moving. Fans yeah. were loving it. They were buying it. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I still stand behind how much easier it is to find talent all day long, mm -hmm. but to find quality decision makers, quality mm -hmm. business That's men right. or women in entertainment is an anomaly because most right. people are driven by ego. Mm -hmm. They come into this space mm -hmm. and not by 
it's usually ego first and passion second. Mm -hmm. You know, right. if, 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 if the ego goes aside and you focus on passion, what's good for the art mm -hmm. and the culture, then you'll have a different approach to it, you know? Yeah. What, so, um, what was your first meeting with P? How did that come about? Like, how did you go and commandeer him and get his attention? To come I mean, to it, it happened in the parking lot at mm -hmm. Music People. Mm -hmm. So he was always there, you know, mm -hmm. he had a trunk full of CDs and selling them to who he could, trying to get it to the mom and pop as they're mm -hmm. walking in before they go in and buy it from, <laughs> from you. Hustling. Hey, yeah, yeah. yeah, hustling the hustler, you know, yeah. right? In their yeah. parking lot. That's funny. <laughs> so you short so, stop it. Yeah, no, and he hit me up like, you know, who are you? And, uh -huh. and show, prove you're not a cop and uh -huh. all this shit, you know? <laughs> he hit you with the yeah, prove you're not a cop. <laughs> yeah, you know, after yeah. a few minutes of conversation, we just kind of get building and then yeah. I kept seeing it and then he be like all right this is dropping ne next week and here's a little chart and i'd keep a keep an eye on it and mm -hmm. he kept coming through on everything he said mm -hmm. so um took that back to the boss mm -hmm. and what i didn't know at the time um is that this started a a, a feud between the two owners of priority wow. I, don't, I don't think i've ever said this on, on wow. record I'm, i may have but i don't think so mm -hmm um so while i was bringing these labels back to priority and saying we need to sign them mm -hmm. um mark went to his partner brian and said hey man i know you do a and r and promotion i do sales but my sales guy dave is finding all these artists as talent that are doing impressive numbers independently and we want to start signing them mm -hmm. and um and apparently brian said no stay in your lane and mm. I didn't know this until 15 years later wow. kind of thing. Wow. And it definitely had an impact on mm. my time and mm -hmm. priority, not okay. understanding why I was having this friction with uh -huh. the other half of the company. Got you. So um, so he came back to me after presenting No Limit and, mm -hmm. and JT. Um, and, I, and it was JT first and then No Limit. But he came back to me and said, talk to Brian, it's a go. Mm -hmm. So he lied to me, told me it was all approved by his partner. Wow. When he read, now, in the regular world, if someone makes uh, that kind of a mistake or mm -hmm. fudges the truth, whatever you want to say, and it, and it ends up making you millions, mm -hmm. you, you think people would be, be happy. Like, yes. hey, man, thanks for not listening to me. Right. You right. know, I appreciate you bullshitting me with your partner. And, <laughs> right. you know, um, but the fact is that he ne he was, it was never pleasant. Wow. So, and it's I never ego. understood it. I mean, this dude ego. put 150 million in his pocket personally, right. mm -hmm. just on the sale beside mm -hmm. all the revenue that was generated. And mm -hmm. it was just always like friction. And you said that's Brian or? That's Brian. Really? Yeah. So I've never had a, a good relationship with Brian Turner. Oh, wow. Yeah. And how and many years were you at prior? 10. Wow. Was it always tumultuous or was it just yeah. kind of? Yeah. Uh, really? But they, but Mark and Brian were very different. Brian's okay. very, he's a, he's a conservative Canadian. Mm -hmm. And Mark's a Italian Sicilian hothead. Yeah. And I fall more into the hothead right. side of things than the conservative Canadian side of things. So okay. I think he just kind of put us in the same package together. And mm -hmm. then when he found out that we were doing shit behind his back mm -hmm. that I wasn't aware of, mm -hmm. you know, um, like I said, I didn't know about that until 2005. What did he think that you were doing behind his back? Well, I was, uh, he instructed his partner to say no to me signing labels. Oh, okay. And I was signing them without okay. him knowing, but I didn't know I was doing it quietly. Okay. So what did he, was he not watching the books or watching the budgets? <laughs> like, right. That's another question, right? That's, that, <laughs> oh, that okay. presents a whole nother series of questions. I yeah. don't know how I'm that like, got How off. are you not knowing know. that? <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't oh, know. wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, especially once it gets rolling, like he clearly knows you signed no limit. Right, like, right. A year into right, it, right? Like you know you signed no limit. Well, yeah. for sure. And at that point, like it's doing very well, mm -hmm. and yeah. you would think that you know he'd gotten over whatever the yeah. uh, the the it ego like ego yeah. yeah yeah whatever the ego. ego issue was maybe because it wasn't his idea. But then mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I was a four person department doing mm -hmm. three hundred million in billing, and he had two hundred and fifty people that were mm -hmm. struggling. Right. Because if you really look at priority records and you and you take away NWA, mm -hmm. you take away affiliates, mm -hmm. Mac Ten, mm -hmm. Dub C, you take away all the 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 uh, the umbil not what am I trying to say? All the tentacles that right. came out of that. Right. Name an artist that priority broke. Mm. Name one that wasn't mm. a distributed label 
Yeah. You know, because all the hot shit was distributed label. We had mm -hmm. Jay Z. Yeah. Yeah. We had signed Rockets. Yeah. Yep. We had Most Def, Talib. We had a lot of hot shit, all distributed label stuff. Mm -hmm. On Priority Records. You guys had some Wu Tang albums too, right? Yeah. Distributed label. As a matter of uh -uh. fact, did, did you guys have a Black Market from Sacramento? Yeah. I'm from I signed, Sacramento. Yeah. I, yeah. Signed, I signed Lynch and Black Market. That was a, that's a whole nother With Cedric. crazy ass story. How was that? I'm from Sacramento. <laughs> yeah. So and I, and you, I, and how old are you? I'm 41. Okay, and, so you were a bit young then. You but I was at Black Market. I, I you interned there? there. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't so, know if you knew Clyde, but Clyde was at. Uh, uh, what was, year? What year were you there? Af, right after Loaded came out. Oh, so you were there for? Oh wait, Loaded is after season. Yeah. Season was like so you, so you got Black Market when Psychoactive came out. I the first album I released was Season. Oh, Season. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I signed Season okay. and and then took Black Market from there. Okay. What, so what was that like? What was that bringing in Cedric I mean, Singleton and, and Black a... Market and working <laughs> with Brother Lynch? I mean, Lynch and I got a lot of history. Okay. And anyone who knows him knows he's a different kind of dude. Oh, he's absolutely. He's not what you expect. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. he's really kind of a homebody. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Recluse. And very much so. Mm -hmm. um, and Cedric was, you know, the college grad mm -hmm. playing the gangster. Oh, you know, and that gets dangerous when mm -hmm. you don't know the rules and you mm -hmm. start doing stuff that, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can't stop once you start it. Mm. So there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of uh, crazy shit that went down over that deal. Anything that you can speak of? I mean, you should interview Lynch. I know he's got uh -huh. season two coming up. Yeah. But I mean, I know there was a home invasion where he mm -hmm. had to jump out of, you know, people mm -hmm. kicked in the doors and. That was to get back like some masters or something. Or some uh, no, or something. I really think they were trying to kill him. <laughs> oh, okay. Straight up. I mean, okay. he had to jump out a second floor window and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. escaped. Uh, his family was still in the house. He got away. Oh, wow. But there was a lot. FBI got involved. There was a lot of drama. Oh, wow. And so, this is all behind just the black market, him not wanting to, to continue. With I, I can't speak on what caused that. Okay. But I, and then I had, he came in, pulled guns on us at Priority, Cedric did. He rolled mm -hmm. down 12 deep and mm -hmm. pulled guns on the receptionist and <clears throat> okay. cornered me in my office. And wow. Well, excuse me. We have to <laughs> shout out to Yuck Mouth. Allegedly. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Allegedly. Yep. Hey, here, here's the thing. I was never close with Seb, but Seb was always really good to, to the people I knew. He was always good. To, like, he took care of people. And I think even X has said, shouted mm -hmm. him out. Like, he, there's definitely people he took care of. He was always mm. kind to me in passing, mm. but he, I don't he know. He put on a nice uh, facade. I don't know, know Sid uh, personally. I mean, we we've chopped chopped it up for some time. You know, he seems to be good. I don't know him personally though. Never yeah. done any business. I mean, but. he was very pleasant until mm -hmm. he wasn't. You know? Okay, okay. And honestly, what happened was he <laughs> he um, there was a lot of money coming in from Lynch, mm -hmm. and he was buying a lot of stuff for himself mm. and then telling all the artists and staff he couldn't pay them mm -hmm. couldn't pay royalties couldn't pay staff um because priority wasn't paying them mm. which ended up falling on my shoulders why wasn't priority we, we were oh you were yeah okay that's what i'm saying oh i see okay. yeah so you. you know he was he was riding the big body bends and, uh, and the new house and so lynch's had, complaints were valid lynch and everybody else on the okay. label at the time oh wow but he you know he diverted all that and pointed it towards me mm. and so last time i saw cedric i think mm -hmm. there were i don't know 10 guns mm -hmm. drawn in the cnn building oh wow so i don't so want to go too far y'all had y'all had drama up there oh it's yeah like cadillac it records. was crazy <laughs> said cadillac it was crazy, yeah, cra yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. like yeah, so surreal to look back what, at. what was it like when no limit was up there when you had hot boy Oh my you God! All of them. You had Pokey and all that big man, G, all of them family back then, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they took the office over, right? Like when they twenty <laughs> deep showed up, right? Like Brian would go hide in his office. And I remember one time we were in my office, and there was I don't know ten of us. Everyone uh -huh. was smoking a blunt, uh -huh. and and the way the air recycled through the building, <laughs> it was dumping down in Brian's office. Uh -huh. So he came storming down into my and I, there was there was guns out and lasers yeah. in the smoke and all this shit and yeah. he swings my door open you know about to start yelling at everyone and he just froze and uh -huh. everyone just looked at him someone offered him a hit of the blood <laughs> pointed the laser at him yeah. and he just said have fun guys <laughs> closed the door went back to his office I mean they took the place over yeah. I mean yeah. he had a pool table in there they gave him a corner office and, uh huh it's their office now yeah for real <laughs> the yeah. no one would now. tell no one would tell him what he couldn't do right that's right that's you right know? and he was always cool like yeah. it was always fun it was love everyone was respectful mm -hmm. it just brought like 
a whole nother flavor to the, let, to the let me ask you um and i always heard this is rumor um was it true that art that priority as to your point of you saying that they didn't really break any artists it was all label distributed mm -hmm. is it true that they would pay some of the labels for some of their artists to put their artists on those labels for instance like i heard that that um who was it um damn i'm trying to think of one of the no limit artists it wasn't young you're bleed. Talking, yep. oh you know i yeah. knew where i was going yeah. with it okay yeah. you got it okay yeah so bleed was signed to sea lokes mm -hmm. uh label i forgot what it was called he had um concentration camp yep yep and mm -hmm. um and p felt like um like loke was his own man mm -hmm. he didn't need to be under i'm sure there was more to it mm -hmm. but what was being told to me mm -hmm. was that like loke, loke stands on his own mm -hmm. he doesn't need me mm -hmm. but he got this artist bleed mm -hmm. and he's incredible so mm -hmm. instead of instead of um me signing him mm -hmm. let's sign him to priority but put the tank on it mm -hmm. so p got a check right from priority he ends up bleed ends up signing the priority and c loke ends up with the joint venture with priority got you so yeah, to the No Limit fan, it looked mm -hmm. like a No Limit exactly. release. Exactly, exactly. But the back end books were all different. Yeah, is that something that Priority practiced with? No, artists? that was the only time we did that that, that, that okay. I'm aware of. Okay. Yeah, and it was and it was crafted by P. Oh wow! Out of respect to uh, Loke, like oh, it was wow. on some man shit from the, my perspective. Wow. Okay. Like it, nothing was weird or uh -huh. you know it was really more respectful. How did how did Priority adjust and keep up with P's business model because it was so. Uh, not the norm it they was couldn't. so yeah because they no couldn't. no other distributed label was doing shit every tuesday like no that. i know i remember the fighting with we had this we had this um british cfo that started at the company mm -hmm. and um and we we're putting out back-to-back -back records and i think it was silk's record that was coming up mm -hmm. and they wanted to press like a hundred thousand mm -hmm. and i was i was i was wild back mm -hmm. in my in my 20s yeah, yeah. You know, I was on a mission and it wasn't calculated uh -huh. it was just like keep up yeah survive and keep up and I remember going up there and getting in this 60 year old British CFO, you mm -hmm. know, I'm like 24, 25. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I'm saying, well, what are you thinking at a hundred thousand? He's mm -hmm. like, what are you thinking at 400,000? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you don't know shit. Like mm -hmm. how long you been here a week? Like, I don't care where you came from or what you did, but we need to ship 400,000 right. on this. Fuck that 500,000. Yeah. And he was like, you're out of your mind. And I'm yeah. like, all right, so check it out. You're gonna do the 500,000 and either, and I'm wrong, I'm fired next week, but if you fuck <laughs> around and do that 100,000 right. and it should have been five, it's yeah. your ass next your week. Ass, yeah. Then I stormed out of there, he did the 500, and we sold through it in like four days. Wow. So little by little, it just like got everyone in the company to realize mm -hmm. like, yo, mm -hmm. just let them do what they're doing. Don't stop mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. stay out of their way and Mm -hmm. you know let let the the momentum continue so it's like you had a hot hand for a cool little minute were there any labels that didn't do well that you that you had your hands on that you was like uh, oh i missed with that one mm, like that i made a mistake yeah it just didn't pop sometimes I mean, shit just don't uh, there pop was some dance there was some edm stuff mm -hmm. that was smaller i would some mm -hmm. like a friend of mine's label mm -hmm. um out of out of miami called mm -hmm. neurodisc mm -hmm. and, and but they were consistent sellers mm -hmm. and respect respected mm -hmm. in their region mm -hmm. but they didn't pop nationally you mm -hmm. know so there were definitely some labels that did well mm -hmm. um and were respected but didn't blow up like okay you know like raucous did or yeah. even black market i mean that was a pretty big run for them too yeah, it was for it independent was. how 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 was it working with dane and jay with rockefeller you know i wasn't i wasn't involved but what i what i saw mm -hmm. was um us losing jay-z and dame once again over ego because mm. dame was in there doing what dame does that's right and talking shit and, mm -hmm. you know creating a fuss mm -hmm. and and um and he was under brian turner and brian so i was mark's number two mm -hmm. and brian had a guy named andrew shack andrew shack yeah, who was his andrew. number two yep. and andrew would deal with dame and those mm -hmm. two mm. were were oil and water it didn't mm -hmm. work out so i remember uh my staff and I trying to explain like, yo, you don't want to lose this cat right mm -hmm. here. And I fuck him. They're a headache. They're a pain in the mm -hmm. ass. It's just, <laughs> you know, it was yeah. all, it was just mm -hmm. unnecessary bullshit. Right, right. And I don't know the details, but yeah. I know that basically we were fine letting him go. Mm -hmm. And, and when I say we, I mean, Brian's side. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of the big distribution plays they had, you right. know, came and went after reasonable doubt. So, okay. 
Okay. Um, but think of how different <gasps> history would have been mm -hmm. if if that would have been family. Oh, that's right. Right? right, and then around, and then around the same time is when they passed on M's mm. uh, demo. Really, I mean, a little, so a little while later, did. Priority had okay. yeah, Andrew Shag. I'm gonna have to say it. Andrew Shag had M's uh -huh. demo. <laughs> called me in, and I'm like, "Yo, that one." Uh -huh. And um, now nah, white white rappers don't sell. I'm mm -hmm. like that one. Yeah, and didn't happen. Wow. And, but again, when you think of history, yeah. had Jay stayed and Priority signed M, it would have been like the yeah. whole industry would be different. It'd have been yeah, way nothing different. would be the same. Way different. Yeah. So. so at what point did you feel like you needed to transition out of priority? Did you leave or did you get fired? No, um, good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so in 99, I started 91 and 99 or 98, um, Mark had a stroke. Okay. Just disappeared. Mm -hmm. No one knew what happened, didn't show up to work. Mm. Um, no one could get his wife, like just mm -hmm. vanished. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what happened. And uh, when it was finally announced that he, you know, he was in recovery mm -hmm. and learning life over again, mm -hmm. um, I was left for dead mm. with with oh, no gosh. one to protect me from the earlier drama I told you. you about. So they Got started you. gunning for the right. one guy who was making the most money right. for the company, which again, yeah, that makes that's no counterproductive. Sense, yeah, I don't but egos that. are bigger than yeah. everything else when it yeah. comes down to it. Okay, so yeah, it turned into a <clears throat> war and <throat> um, and a lot of harassment and. Um, I eventually, I, I, I essentially, I quit. I mm -hmm. resigned. I, you know, I negotiated out of my mm -hmm. contract mm -hmm. and, you know, left with my finger in the air. Mm -hmm. And um, did you did you have a plan or you was just like fuck it? I'm tired of this. Shit. No, I mean I was fucked up over it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was a hard pill to swallow when yeah. you know that the lights are on and everything that's that's um, mm -hmm. you know, productive and um keeping the keeping the company company alive and well is coming out of your little fourth person department but right. we're getting shit on mm -hmm. by you know those who sign our checks yeah wow. so yeah i left uh pissed off mm -hmm. and um did they do right by you financially i mean <sighs> it's kind of hard to it's kind of mm -hmm. hard to answer I, my answer to that is everyone gets fucked in the music business mm -hmm. whether you're an artist an executive Whatever it is you do, if you're in entertainment, you gotta, you know, lick some wounds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to get there. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I didn't have equity. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any anything real. Did you know to ask for that no. at the time? Exactly. No. Exactly. Uh, Mark did put some things in my contract that allowed me to participate in some of the profits, mm -hmm. which was wonderful. But mm -hmm. as soon as um, he was forced into retirement, it was a change of my contract right. and. Right. And the battle began and became more about lawyers and drama. And, and at my age and what I'd been through, I mm -hmm. just didn't have the wherewithal to deal with that bullshit. I was so yeah. upset about it. You and know? what year What year did you leave Priority? I think it was 99. 99? Yeah. Okay, so you don't, so they're on fire with, with no limit. Yeah, so. but at that mm -hmm. point, cash money was on the scene. That's right. You know, and mm -hmm. no limit was, you know, in a mm -hmm. battle for yeah. who was running right. shit. Yes, right. So, you know, it felt like peak had already happened. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, my partner, Duffy Rich. Duffy Rich. You yep. remember Duffy? I do. You probably yep. dealt with him. Yep. I because I was dealing with the bullshit while yeah. he was holding together, uh -huh. you know, all the, the inner workings mm -hmm. of priority and no limits. Yep. So he was instrumental in all that. Because Duffy Rich and uh, I believe Andrew Shack, their names were on I'm About It as well. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The he, well, they were in it. Yeah. Well, right. Duffy was. Yeah, he played the uh, the white the, cop. The cop. Yeah, he the, called the me suit. crying yeah. from that from <laughs> from that basket when there's a scene when they're all sitting around a basketball court outdoors and then the guns are lying. He's, uh -huh. like, he's like, "Dude, you gotta get me the fuck out of here, man. These guns are real. These guns are real. <laughs> Motherfucker just had a fucking cock nine with a round in the chamber in my head. I'm not cool with this. <laughs> you know, he was really freaking out, yeah. rightfully so. Yeah, you know." Yeah. So yeah. that was so, some I and, and kind of stepping on that, when when P decided to do I'm about it and and obviously, I mean, at that point, can you is it is it safe to say that to some degree, respectfully, maybe P was kind of running priority too? Just he kind was of, bigger than priority. Right. So right. he wasn't running So they couldn't tell him no. I mean, no. basically whatever he wanted to do. Yeah, he's did. like Drake at Universal. Right. right. Who can just like write the check <laughs> at this point. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he got to that point. And no one was no one had the balls to tell him. Yeah. Once Mark and once Mark was yeah. was out, Mark and I were the only two that really mm -hmm. communicated mm -hmm. with him, you know, mm -hmm. on that level. Mm -hmm. So um yeah, he he ran shit. Right, right. So 
coming from priority, you say you didn't have a plan, you just left, but then you find yourself at J Corps at that yeah, point. Yeah, I took a I took a break and was mad mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. everything because you know when you have such great success right. and end on such a shitty note, like mm-hmm. what'd you do it for? Right. You know, like right. and what's next if that yeah. sucked. Mm-hmm. As great as it was, mm-hmm. right? Oxymorons on everything. Right. right. So um a guy named Dan Gill, who's over at BMG now, he called me up and um and said um, that the owner, it was Jake, Jake Hort informed it, it was still Mammoth Records. Mm-hmm. So a guy named Jay Ferris, who owned Mammoth Records, which was like an eclectic, mm-hmm. squirrel nut zippers, a lot of big band shit. Mm-hmm. Um, he sold to Disney for mm-hmm. 25 million. Okay. And in his, um, in, in the sale, he was allowed to stay in the music business, but not what genre he was in. Not, so he, not compete. So he wanted to yeah. go urban. Right, right. So uh, so I was taking a break and mm-hmm. I got the call to meet him at the Chateau Marmont and help him build J Corps, mm-hmm. which uh yeah is where it, yeah. Is that where you came into the know of Strange? Yeah, and, that's where that's yeah. where so we were we were we were setting up shop over there and Violet um uh, Violet Brown <laughs> sent me Angelic as a demo. Right. Right. And and I'd heard tech before, but it didn't connect because mm-hmm. I heard him through the regime, mm-hmm. wake up show anthem. Yeah, Mal. yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, but Angelica's when you came across incredible album, when you came across uh, with J Core, it wasn't yet strange. It was just techno as an artist, correct? Um, no, it was it was, it was strange. strange. Yeah, okay. Travis was it was Travis who I met okay. first before I met Tech. Oh, okay, and Travis was financing. You know, Travis mm-hmm. was doing. Um, he was already self-made and furniture right. and the sod furniture. and yep. mm-hmm. and then um he went into clothing mm-hmm. i think it was called paradise clothing yes and you were probably you probably know the I gear remember. Yeah, yeah and so he wanted local hometown mm-hmm. heroes to rep his gear mm-hmm. and he was a big fan of tech and mm-hmm. he couldn't understand why tech hadn't gone further in his mm-hmm. career mm-hmm. and so he sat down with tech and said one you know, mm-hmm. can you rep my shit? Right. Two, what's up? Like, mm-hmm. why are you? And, you know, he explained how he was with Perspective mm-hmm. with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and that yep. folded yep. and then signed a quest and Quincy mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. folded. And mm-hmm. and at that time that Travis met him, he was being managed by Sway and King Tech mm-hmm. and um, who, you know, who's all family. Yeah. And, um, and then he had some, you know, some of the neighborhood dudes had their hands in. And yeah, those were my guys. Diamond. The Diamond Shields. Yeah, yep. rest in peace. Yep. yep. Um, so um, Travis got in there and started unwinding those deals. Mm-hmm. And at first, I believe he walked away like, yo, your shit is a mess. You got too many hands in, <laughs> mm-hmm. your, in your situation. But um, he couldn't we all got i use the word mm-hmm. infected mm-hmm. like once you became like a tech nine fan mm-hmm. back then it's like mm-hmm. all you could see hear listen to wow were the people that were in it yeah you know, myself yeah. included yeah did, did did travis have experience in the music business nothing. prior to that nothing oh, wow. wow no so i pretty much brought him in okay and um opened the rolodex mm-hmm. and you know and he's an he's an incredible businessman mm-hmm. very intelligent mm-hmm. human being that um that got it quickly Mm-hmm. And was definitely the right kind of individual to mm-hmm. be able to manage the industry, mm-hmm. you know. What happened with J Core? Because it seemed like it was short lived. Yeah, that's another that's another story, <laughs> right? Because so, I think J Core was like poised to kind of be some some, yeah, we some were, big we were, shit. Yeah, at, we were on point. our way. Right. And right. I mean, I, you'll you, my my story is going to be different than anyone else's, and I'll probably say too much, but um, the owner lost his way he mm-hmm. had a health issue that came up okay and it distracted <clears throat> him and he ended up on you know on, on pills mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he went from someone that really impressed me to someone mm-hmm. that just shit the bed oh put wow. it nicely wow okay. and um and i'm all about and you know mm-hmm. i mean i wouldn't be alive if i wasn't about my word mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. um if i tell somebody something's happening yeah it's happening right and 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 i explained that when i <laughs> took on this Mm -hmm. role for him Mm -hmm. like look man when we say we're gonna do something it's got to be done Mm -hmm. you know you're you're gonna have a problem with me if all of a sudden you're fucking around with people's money and Mm -hmm. and so that started happening Mm -hmm. and um and he started doing shit behind my back Mm -hmm. and i i pulled the plug Mm -hmm. i shut down the west we were in ice t's office Mm -hmm. on highland and um or on la brea and hollywood boulevard ice t had where you we had base we had corner i think it was yeah, yeah. and it had corner the red records. crushed yeah. velvet walls yeah. and yeah. yeah so i was friends with um with him and and darlene and mm-hmm. 
he wanted to sublet it, so mm-hmm. it worked out perfect for us. Nice. But people were driving around the building looking for us because Jay wow. promised the check was in the mail and it wasn't. And, Damn. You know, I'd go out there and have a mm-hmm. conversation with a dude and a shotgun in his lap and, mm-hmm. you know, and wow. and let him know, no, nah, you're the wrong. Let me give you the address in New York <laughs> where, where the problem's yeah. at because right. we ain't it, you know? Right, right. So it was unfortunate. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, what really killed it was um, back then you could, when you did a deal with Interscope, which mm-hmm. is who J-Corps was through, mm-hmm. um, it was based on shipping numbers. Mm-hmm. In ter- so you might have a contract that says you'll get another half million dollars mm-hmm. when you ship a half million units or mm-hmm. hit this milestone in sales. Right. And so some games were played mm-hmm. in regards to that to access more money. And Jimmy Iovine caught mm-hmm. Jay with his hand in the cookie jar. Mm. And it was over like that. So we're doing it like that, though, with the shipping. Who, who, who bites it for the uh, returns? It's all part. Of, it's all part of the scandalous process. Man. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Yeah. It's just because you, no, you ship make don't it. mean that 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 you sell that. Yeah. Well, you you try to do it on an artist that over time would sell through that quantity. Oh, so, I, see. I see. So if you knew that someone was going to sell three hundred thousand, uh-huh. but it might take three years. I got you. You know okay. what I'm saying? You okay. might you might only need a hundred. Okay. If you ship that extra two hundred, yeah. take yeah. it back, and then just kind of. <laughs> sell it over yeah. the next couple of years you know okay. so you get your money back got you got but you. then you get the capital you need to keep building right right so so i'm assuming and this is probably a, a dumb question but um uh, back then they didn't have to front the money for manufacturing there were credit lines and different things like that's that. right okay. that's right i mean it depends on who you were but yeah, yeah if you were established yeah and okay. and yeah and a lot of it had to do with what i said earlier about mm-hmm. having your money guaranteed your receivables guaranteed <laughs> right because right. yeah, there was plenty of concern of mm-hmm. retail going belly up. Yes, and yes. you know that could be the end of your business. But mm-hmm. if your receivables were guaranteed, you mm-hmm. were golden, unscathed. Okay. So mm-hmm. once J Core goes belly up, did you guys ever release anything under J Core? Oh, what you mean during the time? Yeah. Oh yeah, we put out yeah. we put out some Lynch and Sibo. We okay. put out Eight Ball and MJG. We put That's out. Right. That's right. That's we right. We put out um, Angelic. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think what other oh shit we put out um uh man jay dilla's uh how am i spacing on slum village mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we signed a label called good vibe who had mystic mm-hmm. you know went on to be grammy nominated okay. so yeah we had a lot of okay a nice yes. diverse it was a yeah. really nice diverse record company it's okay. a shame it went the way it went wow you wow know? so at that point it goes belly up so so now how do you wind up with strange <laughs> so so at this point as i said i was i was enamored by tech yeah and and it was my job to mm-hmm. bring him to the world like mm-hmm. that's literally what it felt like to me mm-hmm. and and my staff so when that ended once again crushed fuck we had something great going and mm-hmm. it's gone so mark the um the owner of priority who mm-hmm. was recovering from the stroke calls me up right after j core ends mm-hmm. and says um what are you excited about mm-hmm. i said i'm i'm excited about this artist tech nine that mm-hmm. we just got released from interscope because of some shenanigans mm-hmm. and trying to figure out what what to do with them and he's like how excited are you and i'm like i couldn't be more excited this 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 the one mm-hmm. like he's the talent that you know i really want to work with mm-hmm. and that next morning he calls me and says, check your bank account. Mm-hmm. And I go check my bank account. He deposited a million dollars wow. into my account. Wow. No paperwork, <laughs> no contract. And who did this again? Saram, Mark Saram. Okay, okay. Just From... shot a million dollars into my account uh-huh. and said, go do what you got to do with Tech9. He was under a non-compete mm-hmm. with Capital. Mm-hmm. So he couldn't do that on his own. Got you. So, um, so that's what financed absolute power. Mm. So we did that all completely on our own, mm. just me and a few people mm-hmm. and a million dollars. Okay, so that so you put the sole investment into Absolute Power. Or yeah, that million it? dollars that got sent over was okay. used for everything that we did with Absolute Power. Oh wow! wow. And that that um, financed, and then and then eventually, um, when Mark's non compete ended, then he partnered up with with Strange. Okay, and it was a joint venture between MSC. Uh, music and entertainment mm-hmm. and strange music okay okay but you being the kind of more or less the primary financier well representing the financier okay i got you you know right. what i'm saying it wasn't I got my you. bread i follow i follow yeah, so, okay but i got you okay um 
so yeah, that's how that's how And so know. that's how you got the position of vice president um for Strange. Well, it, it, well, yeah, I guess I guess so. Then mm -hmm. after that, I took a, I I got fed up with mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Um in the industry, I just kind of burned out mm -hmm. and moved to Hawaii for 5 years. Okay. And while I was in Hawaii in Kona, I stayed on consulting, mm -hmm. stayed on with Strange, mm -hmm. stayed on through Ever Ready and Killer and mm -hmm. all the rest of the mm -hmm. releases introduced them to my network mm -hmm. and helped get distribution through Fontana mm -hmm. at the time. Right. Ron Spaulding yep. at the time. Yep. And then um, when I came back in 09, like Travis, Travis had gotten to the point where he couldn't, he needed help. Okay. And you know, Travis doesn't trust too many people. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I was one of the few that actually had real industry DNA, right. not a Kansas city, right. You know, learning on yeah. the job kind of yeah. thing, but actually knew the right, people exactly. and players so exactly. um so he said when you sh can show and prove you're on the ground in la like you're mm -hmm. you're not just visiting but yeah you, i want to see the container yeah i want to see your <laughs> shit i want to see a house yeah. you bought i want to see yeah. you're here uh then i need you uh -huh. and so in 09 that's when i stepped in officially as you know um uh, i guess vp or yeah. general manager or whatever my title was okay but and and what, what what's it like working with travis I mean, I learned a lot mm -hmm. from Travis, you mm -hmm. know, um, it evolved over the years. I'm about so. to say, so you end up learning from him. In different ways. He learned okay. a lot from me. I yeah. learned, he's an incredible businessman. Mm -hmm. He's a very smart individual. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned a lot from him. He learned a lot mm -hmm. from me about the industry. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were a good partnership for a lot of years. Okay. Okay. And um, it worked well for many I, years. And, you know, I, I know Travis loosely. I mean, we, we've talked, we've been around each mm -hmm. other. I, I, I could say we're, we're cool, we're, we're cordial. Um, you hear different things about Travis. Um, some people would say that, that, that he runs strange like Suge. He's like a white Suge Knight. <laughs> would, you, would, you, would you say that? Would that be your... To a degree, mm -hmm. you know, he's not a he's a he's a fan of fear mm -hmm. as part of his management mm -hmm. style. You mm -hmm. know, he he didn't he didn't keep it quiet, and mellow when he was upset about something. He okay. was very vocal. Uh huh. So, um, but that I wouldn't would, go that, as far. That, as... that would scare someone though, because I mean, one thing about Suge, and I'm I'm not trying to shit on Trav, but you know, Suge had the goons, you know, and Suge was you know he, himself. He would he would uh carry it out you know right. he would do his thing but i'm saying i guess i don't know trav like that so where would the fear come from i mean i mean he would hire the people that oh. would respect him through fear oh is, oh okay I see. you know he okay. wasn't there was only a few people that wouldn't react to that and mm -hmm. they were usually the real industry folks yeah. the yeah. ones who've already been through the right the ringer, <laughs> right you know right like, yeah, right. all right come on man yeah <laughs> you yeah. know but the kansas city folk mm -hmm. and i know kansas city's no joke exactly. obviously you but know. at that level on the industry side yeah i got he you. was the heavy i got you he was yeah, the heavy yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah he he ruled with um you know it was his house yeah it was very you know he, yeah. he have you been to the have you been in the building? Yes, I have. All right, so you've yeah. seen yeah. what that means to Man, him. it's dope. I, I mean, you, listen, we could lick any corner in the I office. I'm super. I, I, than I the say this in my all house, the time, man. man. I say this all the time. I'm super proud of tech and and what Travis has done with Strange, especially there for my hometown, for my city. Yeah, they're the first to do it. Yeah, you know. And when I went to Strange, I was like, God damn, they got a real compound. They're really mm -hmm. doing business here. What year did you and, go? Do you remember? Yeah, just about seven months ago. Okay, so you saw five buildings. Uh. No, I didn't know there were five buildings. You only went to the I went to the headquarters I, where, where the car wash is. Yeah. I saw the sound stage, but I haven't been. You didn't uh, go to the studios or sound no, stage? No, no. I, shit, I was impressed just seeing the uh, where the cars were yeah. and the merch shit and yeah. all of that. I didn't go to all of that. Yeah, I didn't know that, that was, was there. The, the other building across the way was okay. the studio and the sound stage. Yeah, and, yeah. Man, um, listen, kudos to them dudes. No, I mean, yeah, Travis has he, done, uh, he's done really, he's really well. He's an impressive businessman. Yeah. He killed the game in real estate and then mm -hmm. made himself the the tenant, oh, essentially. Yeah. Buy up everything on the block and right. set up shop, cut yeah. the middleman out. Yeah. yeah. Let I, me remember, talk. I remember when you guys opened uh, the Hollywood Highland location. Yes. I went to whatever that record release was that time. Which one? <clears throat> I'm really remember? good friends with Chris. Chris. Chris is like a great friend of mine. Right on. Uh, Chris. But it was, no, it was him and Chris and Tech performed that night. Okay. 
So I forget what performance that was. Then uh, we, yeah, we probably, yeah, we probably said what's up that night. Probably, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, what, what was it like working <clears throat> with uh with Tech? Uh, on what on what level? In terms of him as an artist, I like, mean, being a fan, all artists, but now, but all now. artists, yeah, like dudes really. Yes. I yeah. mean, I don't think he drove until he was forty something. <laughs> this is true, and might not still have a license. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, all artists, mm-hmm. like just. You know, I've worked with a lot of talent in my mm-hmm. career, and I think he's like the biggest artist. Yeah, you know, in terms yeah. of how how his brain works, yes. and what side of the brain is That's right is engaged, and I mean, he's he's an amazing what, individual. Were you responsible for Lynch coming over to Strange? Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. So how did you? What made that you, trilogy? Yeah. What made did. you put that together? I mean, I was by, just by the way. Hold on, can yeah. we pause? That Lynch trilogy was hard. It was. It was. <laughs> like it, it, I, honestly, because there was them down albums. Like yeah. no, I, I know. I'm a Sacramento guy, maybe I'm biased, but that Lynch trilogy on Strange. Well, was it's it was a combination of Strange and Seven, the producer, mm-hmm. and Lynch just being in the right place. I mean, there's so many stories about Lynch mm-hmm. coming out there. Mm-hmm. And, Give us a good story about Lynch being in Kansas uh, City on stage. All right, we got we uh, so so he had to come out to Kansas City to yeah. record. Mm-hmm. So I'm working with him, and I already knew that that he's limited in a yeah. lot of different yes. ways. So I was worried. Yeah. I was worried. Like, all right, so check it out. You're supposed to leave next Friday, mm-hmm. and how are you gonna get there? Oh, my homeboy got a car. This that. Well, uh, how do you know your homeboy is available? Like, mm-hmm. like I, w- I want something concrete. I want to mm-hmm. talk to the dude who's driving you, yeah. right? Little by little. Oh man, his credit car, he, 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 <laughs> his tires are bad. Uh, credit card ain't working. Oh, he's 24. We can't rent a car. And little by little, as expected, this dude can't get his way to Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And he wants to go. Mm-hmm. Like his life depends on him getting out. And Lynch there. doesn't fly. No, and he won't fly. Right. right. No, I know. All. I'm saying for the listener. Yeah, <laughs> right, fly. right. I guess good point. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. So I anticipated all this. I warned Trav, and you know, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like the the the, the buffer between mm-hmm. Trav and mm-hmm. and Lynch's. Uh, mm-hmm. well, I don't know what the word is to describe Lynch, man. Dysfunctional. Yeah. Uh, let's idiosyncrasies. Just say that, yeah, I was going to say idiosyncrasies and uh, eccentricities. <sighs> yeah, yeah he's, eccentric. Yeah. So there was five of them at the time, okay. and between the five of them, they couldn't. Couldn't muster up a car, couldn't <laughs> okay. muster up the gas money. <laughs> just okay. wasn't happening. So okay. I had to go to Travis, like, all right, so check it out. We got to send a sprinter out, right. scoop him up. Mm-hmm. You got to be kidding me. Travis, like, what the fuck you mean these guys can't get a car? Mm-hmm. I'm like, he hadn't met him yet, I don't mm-hmm. think. I'm like, just, just don't argue. Don't try yeah. to fix what can't be fixed. Just understand if you want mm-hmm. this dude here mm-hmm. and we blocked out the studio for the month, we have to get him. Mm-hmm. Only way it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So we send out one of our drivers in a sprinter, and he drives three days or whatever to Sacramento, Mm -hmm. gets there. So so I get a call. (laughs) I get a call from the driver. He's like, I'm like, all right, we good? And he's like, well, (laughs) we're good, but he's got these puppies. Uh, I'm like, what the fuck do you mean puppies? And he's like, he's got got a couple puppies, and he won't leave them. I'm like, he can't bring a couple puppies to Kansas mm-hmm. City for a month, live in yeah. a hotel room and be in the studio all day. Yeah. And and and, and um and I knew Travis wasn't trying to have he was so right. proud of the sprinter. He yeah. was like it was fucking a yeah. day old or something right. when it went out there, you know, like <laughs> yeah. he could scratch it or you mm-hmm. know, was, as you see, he takes very good care yes. of his stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, put put him on the phone. I'm like, Lynch, man, you gotta find a spot for the puppies, mm-hmm. man. Like put him in a Put him in a yeah, you know, a a kennel, kennel or shelter do what you gotta do, second, yeah. man. Just like yeah. don't bring them. He's like, Dave, man, but they're puppies. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and he's getting all sentimental. And mm-hmm. I'm like, Lynch, they'll be all right. And he's uh-huh. like, Dave, they need me. I need them. <laughs> These are my puppies. And I'm like having this, like, I can't believe I'm having this conversation <laughs> with you right now, dude. Like, your career is on the yeah. line. You need this. I'm like, tripping off the fact, place. though, but this is a season that is sick. I'm tripping right. off the fact that this is, <laughs> nigga, you nigga, know, nigga, nigga, yeah, Never yeah. nigga, 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 So I have to go into Trav's office. And actually, I called him because I remember, like, mm-hmm. holding the phone over here when I was explaining, all right, so check it out. He's there. He's ready to get in the vehicle. We're going to get him out here. But mm-hmm. there's a catch. And they're two puppies. What? Travel lost his shit. Mm-hmm. Screaming. I have no fucking puppies in my fucking <laughs> van. And I, what what about the hotel room? And, yeah. And all that. And this went back and forth for like a day. Like Damn. it held the trip up. 
Wow. Trav's like, no. Lynch is like, I ain't leaving without the puppies. Damn. I'm stuck in the middle. Like, this is the dumbest <laughs> shit ever. <laughs> this is horrible. I can't even believe that I'm involved in something ridiculous. <laughs> so eventually, Trav's like, all right, so check it out. Whatever you do that fucks Nirvana, the hotel room up, I'm stripping your royalties. You're yeah. paying me back everything. I don't want to see him. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear him. But one last question. What, what breed? Mm -hmm. He's like pit bulls, and I guess in Kansas City yeah. they're not legal, <clears throat> right? On top of everything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so now he's checking two dogs into the <laughs> hotel that aren't legal in the city or state. Yeah. Or... <laughs> so now, but he's going to be in the studio twelve <clears throat> hours a day, mm -hmm. so he can't leave the dogs tearing right. the room apart. So we had to find a, a dog handler. Yeah. So the homie G Smooth, mm -hmm. Gary Adam, you know, mm -hmm. uh -uh. he's a Kansas City rapper. Okay. He's like. Lynch is my dude. I'll mm -hmm. do it. He sat in that room for 30 days with those puppies, I mean, except for wow. when they came back and went to sleep. But yeah. that dude sat with those puppies for 30. We're friends to this day. Wow. Over the puppies. Did Travis, did Travis pay him to did do that? Did he get in the credits? Because those three yeah, albums were fire. He did. He Put did. him in a puppy handler. <laughs> right. right? And, and, the man. and the credits. And the room didn't get fucked up. Wow. We didn't have to pay it. I remember calling the hotel manager, uh -huh. like, hey, how's everything that, yeah. you know? <laughs> Yeah. 30 day stay left yeah. and they were like uh actually it's fine everything's uh -huh. good in here and i was like shocked yeah. <laughs> and so that's that's one of the funny stories yeah. about getting lynch and that was for the first mm -hmm. the first album obviously wow wow yeah okay. i have a couple of friends <laughs> i have friends that were all over that album as well from, yeah. from back in my era right of music i'm trying to think of which album was the one it was the one i tried to commit suicide what what album was that on uh, all of them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all of them. I, yes. <laughs> no, they were uh, the, the way that ended, it ended on a bad note, and really? not, not to do with Lynch, not uh -huh. to do with it was it was um we we I can't remember if the trilogy the third the third part of the trilogy mm -hmm. either just dropped or mm -hmm. was dropping mm -hmm. and uh and uh Newtown mm -hmm. Connecticut. Mm -hmm. The shooting at yes. those kindergartners happened yeah. Yeah. and it just mm -hmm. shut like mm -hmm. everyone just took a step back from that because mm -hmm. even though it's art yeah it's still that was gotcha. so shocking yeah. and and upsetting to the world yeah, yeah. i mean we, no one even had to talk to us about it, it was just like it, it felt like we were playing with yeah some dark shit yeah. that that right. when you see the outcome of something that horrible none of us felt good about it yeah. we all just kind of walked away yeah um just out of you know being yeah. human yeah man. just being human yeah, being yeah that, that was the that was the third album the yeah, that, that was the, the the very tail end of it, where we yeah. should have been excited that we yeah. dropped it, and it was like it was just it was just painful to right, see yeah. what was going on in the world, and mm -hmm. people can't differentiate between art and yeah. life. Well, and yeah, Not that Lynch, we were involved. But to Lynch's is, credit, it is just art, like yeah. <clears throat> you know. No, he's, but he's been he's already been through that before. Yeah, like yeah there, he, he had was. a roommate. He had yeah. a roommate. There was a college roommate that killed. I remember his roommate. That. I remember that. And then he went on. He went on. Kathy. Uh, no, it was a uh, Gerardo, I believe. Was no, it, it was a female. It was a, oh, a yeah, blonde yeah, yeah. female. Yeah. Jenny something. Yes. He went on a talk right. show. He did. Lynch did. Yep. And Art Battle. Art Battle. Shout out to Art. And, yeah, yeah, love Art. And yep. um, and they they met the parents mm -hmm. of the kid who got killed by his roommate while listening yep. to Brother Lynch's album. I remember that. was that. on the Black Market compilation, wasn't it? The clip at the beginning of that. They aired the audio of that? Yeah. Did they? Wow. Mm, so the, and the they handled market. it well yeah. like mm -hmm. you know, he really apologized and, mm -hmm. and 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 i don't i don't know if he teared i mean it was it was real it was genuine yeah, he I showed remember. like i'm a real person that didn't want <clears throat> this to happen to your son you know i remember that i think i mean if i think if you talk to anyone who knows him or or you know beyond his personal you know being a recluse or whatever like mm -hmm. he is a phenomenal artist yeah he's incredible and he's yeah, into he is. the horror genre and like you know it's art at, yeah at a very yeah. high level and he's an incredible yeah. he, he might be to me i mean i'm sacramento guy i'm biased but still like name someone out of the west coast lyrically who, i agree i mean that's why is, snoop studied him yeah i mean mm -hmm. like, someone once said to me in an interview why is he got a what do they say that Lin, why is lynch got to use that gimmick to make himself a big artist and mm -hmm. i said actually you got that backwards man right. If he wouldn't have gone down that dark road mm -hmm. yeah. and used that gimmick, right, and he actually just spit what everyone else was spitting at the time, he'd have done it better and been bigger because right. he'd, he'd have had a larger audience. Exactly. So he actually hindered yeah. his his footprint as an artist, in my opinion, uh -huh. to the hardcore underground yeah, by going sure. that route. So it was the opposite, you know, for sure. <clears throat> but yeah, he's on he's on top though, as far as talent goes. 
So now with Strange, um, talk about, so you were with Strange for how long? Well, from from when I first got involved in mm -hmm. 01 mm -hmm. to till 19. Okay. So 18, 19 years. Okay. Damn. So so at what point what what about what happened with the departure? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Travis and I worked well together mm -hmm. for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And um we'd agree 95% of the time, mm -hmm. you know, and we had a good, you know, my job was to <clears throat> take you know days worth of work and mm -hmm. give them a five minute update and mm -hmm. bang through the decisions and keep it moving help mm -hmm. run the company mm -hmm. and um and he started focusing more <clears throat> in the pop space mm -hmm. and he started developing his daughter right. Mackenzie. Mackenzie, yeah and which was fine but mm -hmm. he was doing it on strange mm -hmm. and you know i was really fighting with him to say you know look you have the luxury to do this mm -hmm. you have the wherewithal the financing the resource everything to do it mm -hmm. separate them right separate them go ahead and do your pop thing on a pop yeah label and mm -hmm. keep independent you know mm -hmm. rapping ass strange music right. as an underground hip-hop right. label and um and he wanted to use the fans to help propel mm -hmm. not knowing that that would pigeonhole her algorithm at the mm -hmm. dsps because mm -hmm. spotify and the DSPs were so new on right. the scene right. that you know the problem was that when she should have been on playlists with you know Valerie Larson mm -hmm. and Selena Gomez mm -hmm. and other pop females, she was being you know presented mm -hmm. to hardcore lyrical mm -hmm. uh, playlists, mm -hmm. which obviously she didn't fit, but mm -hmm. that's who listened to her, right? Because uh, the fans became fans of hers. Got you. So basically, the bottom line is our visions just you know yeah. changed. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and it's his company, yeah. and he's allowed to do what he wants, right, and right. I can disagree with it, Yeah, and I'll express myself. And so it went from a wonderful 15-year relationship mm -hmm. of, you know, being being um, a good yin and yang mm -hmm. in terms of how we manage things together to not so well. Right. You know, like it was more disagreeing, went from 95-5 to agreeing to, mm -hmm. you know, 95-5 disagreeing. Mm -hmm. And so I just wasn't the guy to run the company for wow. him anymore, so I stepped down. So did you guys part uh, amicably? Yeah, okay. yeah, we did. Um, I don't think he, I don't think he wanted me mm -hmm. to leave. Okay. Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't um, what he'd hoped for, mm -hmm. but um, it was, it was too difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm, if I if if I feel like I'm not contributing and I'm mm -hmm. not making something better, mm -hmm. I'm making it worse. Then my time's done there. Right. So that's how I felt. Okay. But yeah, we're we're still we're still cool, and yeah. I got nothing but respect for him and Tech and yeah. You know, but you guys made history over there. I mean, we sure did, man. You made history. And yeah, you, you guys made... hit the Forbes list. I yeah, mean, everything yeah, man. that was happening as an independent label. I mean, we yeah. had. I think there was one year we had. I think it, we had thirteen top ten albums, mm -hmm. or maybe it was eleven top 10 albums on the billboard mm -hmm. hip-hop chart mm -hmm. and not even a major had done mm -hmm. that in i think it was 2013 was right. the year where we right. got the title for the most mm -hmm. top 10 mm -hmm. of all record companies mm -hmm. which is crazy to think that you know and then young money came and yeah. shut it all down after mm -hmm. after right. that you know right. but um yeah we definitely did incredible shit mm -hmm. and I, I was blessed to do it twice. Man, yeah. You know? That's why I said I had to get you on the show, bro, because you have definitely yeah. contributed a lot to the culture. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. and I'm, I'm proud of it, you yeah. know? I'm proud of it. I'm proud, and, and, you know, one thing that I always said about P, that, and it's not a diss, mm -hmm. it's actually a compliment, he inspired so many people mm -hmm. because since he wasn't Jay-Z lyrically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he was a normal guy, right? If he could do it, everyone felt like they could do it. That's right. It it, it inspired people to say, mm -hmm. "There's no reason I can't do this." Oh, that's real. That's you why know? we say "No Limit" was a. It wasn't just a moment; it was a movement. Yeah, you know, it really for was. culture and it. It yeah, and the community, the South, it got people motivated. Yeah, Baton Rouge. I mean, it really yeah. did. It changed a lot of lives. It, it made people feel like shit. that, but mm -hmm. but big up to P because no one else has really <laughs> done it like like. Right. Uh, you know right. what I mean? Made I mean, you feel have, that way, but have, damn. I peak. still have gold and platinum records in yeah. boxes I haven't even yeah. opened. <laughs> yeah. They were coming so fast. Yeah, like, yeah. We were just clearing space in the office, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, Pete crushed it, man. He did mm -hmm. something that, yeah, I don't think anyone's ever done. Mm -hmm. Even even Death Row. I mean, that's different when you mm -hmm. look at numbers. But right. as far as magnitude of releases and yeah. impact and, and influence. In, in, a, yeah. in an underserved <laughs> community that wasn't yes. even part of right. the industry. Right. You know, like, And he gets his respect. Every artist that I've ever we've ever talked about or what it like snoop and they're like he came in 
Man. bailed me out, gave mm-hmm. me Eddie Griffin. Like everyone's yeah. like, he just put the opportunity yep. and didn't want nothing in return. No, so. no. Yeah. And all those stories are true, man. Yeah. yeah. You know? And when shout he, out to when Pete, he huh? yeah, shout out to P. When he when he took Snoop on, you know, and was willing to I should let me rephrase that. When he signed Snoop and took Suge on, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that that got dangerous for all of us. It mm-hmm. was it was a crazy time, man. Mm-hmm. You know, we weren't allowed to we weren't allowed to leave the office. Mm. without an armed LAPD escort. Like, there were really? high-risk uh, employees. Oh, wow. At priority, beside the bulletproof entrance yeah. and all that. They had, a, they had <laughs> LAPD in the office on uh-huh. the 10th floor in yeah. a secret office. <clears throat> mm-hmm. They would monitor what was going on because of all the drama. Where was the threat coming from? Because I seen where Reggie Wright uh, Jr., he said that, you know, Snoop going over to No Limit, he kind of helped facilitate that. But he said that it was, it was cool. No. Really? No, it wasn't cool. Really? No, there was uh there was, I mean, there were many incidents. I'm sure mm-hmm. you've heard about the, yeah. the one in the Hawaii. Yeah. With death row in first class with Snoop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was one, I don't know if you ever heard about the, uh, the no limit comedy jam. Yeah. I remember that. Where the, the yeah, mad, for the sure. Fucking madness went down. So what it was is it wasn't necessarily, okay. So it wasn't like it was Suge and P the higher ups having issues. It was the mans and them, the hanger ons of, of death row Ooh. because Reggie Wright Jr. was there. And it, I think it was a uh, uh, baby lane uh, Trayvon that took off on Snoop, uh, but it was like more or less kind of Snoop. They said that Snoop was dissing. He was kind of throwing little shots at Death Row, and they went there to kind of talk to I him, mean, like, "Hey, you know, why are you doing that?" No, they went. They went for him, uh-huh. especially at the comedy jam. Like I saw it yeah. by, myself. Okay, you know? and okay. Um, Suge was away. Yeah, calling shots. Right. I don't know the story that and the uh-huh. gentleman you're speaking on. Uh-huh. I'm sure everyone's got their own perspective. Right, right, right. But um, yeah, no, it was it was definitely uh, very uncomfortable at that time, okay. man. Okay. And especially at that comedy jam. Okay, yeah. I believe Reggie. You, were, you weren't Reg, there. I wasn't were you? there. I wasn't Be, there. You heard about it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because yeah, was... I believe Reggie Reggie Wright uh, Jr. was running. I believe that he was running Death Row while Suge was away. Okay. Yeah. So somehow or another. I think he was he was dealing with it. He was kind of um uh you know talking for Suge, kind of you know okay. moving for Suge while he was locked up, but okay. I think he said that it was him in priority that worked it out with P, you know, uh while Suge was away. So I thought I was under the, the Yeah, impression I've heard a few that, different stories, yeah. but then I'm just going off what I just yeah. saw myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So it was up basically. It was Yeah, yeah. it was definitely it was definitely heated. Okay. I've heard some people try to talk like it wasn't mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I don't know what they saw. Right. Okay. You know. So uh so man, fast forward, what are you doing now, brother? What do you have? Well, on? you can take everything we talked about right there, um, the priority portion. Uh-huh. And I've got um I've got a scripted series in development with MGM Amazon, uh-huh. which is in the early stages mm-hmm. and showrunner and nice. just getting partnered with Matt Alvarez from Straight Out of Compton. Yes. Yes. So Soren Baker, uh-huh. uh, he's one of my partners on that, and Mark mm-hmm. Cerami. Mm-hmm. Started out as a script mm-hmm. about the Priority Record story. Okay. Kind of picking up where Straight Out of Compton left yeah. off. Yeah. And then during the pandemic, we pivoted into a scripted series and partnered with uh, with Alvarez yeah. and MGM and Amazon. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. I th- I may, it's on I th- hold with the writer strike. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So I think I may have read that script. Yeah. I think I saw it. Okay. <laughs> I know I ain't supposed to, but I think okay. I saw it. Yeah. Okay. I would have sent it to yeah. you. Yeah, I, I think I saw it because I think it starts it starts with P, right? Didn't it? I think it, the man, initial... we we had twenty seven okay. rewrites over I ten believe years. The one that I read, the initial uh, script started with P, him you and him meeting in like an alley or parking lot right. or something like that. Right. Yeah. That was definitely one yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely one of them. Nice, so, nice. So I'm doing So that. you're already greenlit. No. Okay. We're partnered. Okay. But um, no, we're waiting for the green light from Am- Amazon. Bought MGM uh-huh. last year for eight and a half billion dollars. Uh-huh. So, okay. so our partner is with with MGM, but they're owned by Amazon. So uh-huh. we have to go through that process, okay. which we were about to do, and then the the, the, the strike happened. And yeah, but we got we got you know first four seasons outlined, okay. pilot written, first season written, okay. showrunner on. Oh wow! So it's as far as it can get without, get without next being... move is greenlit. Yeah. So. Hey, you might want to holler, producer Ken. <laughs> right, we have shit. an Amazon show coming in. Yeah. I mean, I, I was I was a uh, uh, in development at Warner Brothers for years. Okay, and it takes when, forever. When AT and T when AT and T bought Warner Brothers is when I pivoted and reopened the studio. And oh, dope! Me and three partners who have been working together for like fifteen years. We were like, let's just do it on our own, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a whole story behind that, but we we weren't on contract anymore, right? So Warner Brothers 
essentially was like, oh, hey, it's we're dope. we're going to move you here. And I was like, eh, right. we don't have a contract right now. Right, we're, right. We're kind of going to go step out and do our thing. Respectfully. Right. It was it, it was uh, amicable between Good. all of us. Preserve but, that bridge. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we have a bunch of shows in here. We, we do a lot um, <gasps> with Amazon. I actually have a friend over there right now, uh, one at Hulu and one that went to Amazon <laughs> from Warner Brothers. So. Cool. So we have a we have a couple of people over there, and we have a show. I think next week we start building the set here for oh, a scripted series. Congrats! Um, yeah. So that's yeah, dope. That's dope. So that's what that's so that's pretty no, much what you're no, doing now. No, that's that's like the side project. Okay, but okay. no, I'm still involved. I'm 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 a partner in a handful of different record companies. Nice. Consult for okay. um, you know basically identify independent labels that mm -hmm. have a lot of potential but mm -hmm. hit the ceiling and mm -hmm. need that next level. Mm -hmm. of infrastructure mm -hmm. organization distribution mm -hmm. financing mm -hmm. so kind of get involved with them and elevate okay. their game Got and you. uh step in as a partner and nice so um involved so involved in the traditional mm -hmm. you know i mean it's it, i say traditional even though you know it's mm -hmm. a lot of tiktok right a lot of tiktok yeah. stuff. i have a question yeah. yes and i'm so glad you brought that up because i've been one to ask yeah for you, what is it like now getting an artist with social media and them coming already with the fan base versus previously when they were kind of more like truly underground, like they were local? It's totally different, and mm -hmm. and it's and and there's pros and cons to it because mm -hmm. it, we're in a we're in a climate now where talent is secondary to popularity. This is right, which mm -hmm. is unfortunate because mm -hmm. it should be about the art. Right, it should be about your talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, as a result of that um there's a lot of things that are that are going mm -hmm. that that i personally wouldn't be interested in mm -hmm. okay but i'm also irrelevant mm -hmm. as the consumer because mm -hmm. it's the kids who are consuming the music mm -hmm. and ever since you and know running the platforms exactly create the popularity right exactly and ever right. since physical went away yep um it's pretty much just cut the head off the independent artists mm -hmm. because they can't live off of any money generated from the dsps mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and then they're left with touring so the only way to really survive as an artist nowadays is is volume right mm -hmm. and the way you're going to get volume is by it by succeeding with the algorithms on the appropriate mm -hmm. platforms mm -hmm. and it's really got nothing to do with the talent of mm -hmm. the artist so I, honestly i'm torn right okay because as you've heard me talk about artists i've been extremely passionate about mm -hmm. now that's far and few between right you know, like I actually have to go out there and find artists that mm -hmm. really excite me mm -hmm. that I can get involved with just to keep my passion mm -hmm. because there is a lot of stuff I'm working on that's just business, mm -hmm. but I can't get into, um, you know, mm -hmm. what the, what you. the, what the artist is, is about. Yes. Got you. So, Got you. Is that, it, and that's, what's changed. Is it the music that you can't get into or is it just the whole disposition of, you know, because now it's content driven. It's about, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just like real art. I don't like mm -hmm. mistakes or mm -hmm. moments. Mm -hmm. I like real artists mm -hmm. that are there for a reason. That can't do anything but, mm -hmm. you know, their right. their music. You know, mm -hmm. like that that fascinates yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. But when you just you know sat in your car and said some <laughs> shit and hit a lick and all of a sudden you got two and a half million yeah. creates in a week. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Now Trending. every major is yep. is knocking your That's door real. down. You know, we're not gonna pass on that yeah. because we see where it's going. It's the business, yeah. But the passion is different. The artistry different. gets compromised. Yeah. I might the be the one I might be the one to, to step out here and dissent from the group. I I saw at Warner Brothers we were doing digital a lot. A uh, digital company named Machinima that Warner Brothers had purchased. Right. It takes a lot to become someone who gets a million views on something. Oh yeah, it, it takes even if even if it sounds like shit. And here's the thing: I'm I'm from the Brother Lynch X-rated Sibo right Sacramento era, right? Very lyrical. My ear is still like I want to hear that, right? Um, and I can't hear everything that's out nowadays. Impossible. But I still look at it and go like, "Fuck, man!" I remember working at Machinima when people were dying to try to figure out the algorithm to get views so when you see someone who yes. hits it they did something like mm -hmm. whether or not i'm a fan of it is a mm -hmm. different story but they did something yeah to get that but momentum. most of the time from my experience it's an accident like because well when it you're could thinking be. about 120 i know warner brothers it wasn't because you guys were actually trying <laughs> we were to right, make it yeah, happen right but when you got 120,000 songs a day dropping there's yeah. going to be a huge portion of those songs yeah that just strike a nerve with the kids yeah, yeah. and they don't care about you know the, no. that track 
has been no. used a thousand times. They don't care and... about originality, none of that. Because no, in our nothing. day, you had to be original. You had now, to, and where you came from, yeah, what you did, it was a story. Pedigree, you had man. to have the story. Yeah, it had to be a story to you. Yeah. What, I'm curious, what would be your advice to young artists now, being that you're on the executive side? Real, like like real artists. Yeah, uh, or <laughs> artists or real artists. Just just people wanting to get I mean, in, the, in the music business. Uh, you have to embrace all the platforms. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people, and, and this is where I see a lot of real artists cut off their nose to spite their face because they're like, they don't want to fuck with TikTok. Mm -hmm. And yep. I have to have that yep. coming to Jesus with them. Thank you. Thank you. You Me will too. not succeed yep. without, you know, we're in the business of attention. Exactly. And if you can't, where are you getting their attention right now? Exactly. If you're not on TikTok and Instagram and you're not working the platforms and mm -hmm. figuring out the algorithms, where are people finding you? Yes. Oh, well, I just put it up on Spotify and it's so good. And I'm like, no. <laughs> That's not, no. No. Go no. try to listen to 1% of the songs that drop today, this week. <clears throat> Just try to get through 1% of them, and you can't. It's, that, it's impossible. I'm, so mm -hmm. you have to learn how to work with technology yep. and platforms yep. that will give you the opportunity to go viral. That's right. And, and most don't. I'm glad you said it, because <laughs> I try to give this information mainly to Kansas City mm -hmm. and, and to young mm -hmm. artists. And they're very... Um, they, they, I don't know if because they don't know how to do it and because they don't get the results, because they have to understand it's not something that's just going to happen. You have to keep swinging. Right. You have to keep right. swinging. It's right. It's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. And I think that they, they reject it. They, because you get these, especially when you're talking about street rappers, yeah. you know, oh, I ain't no, no internet dude. I ain't doing Right. And I'm like, dude, you, you're, you're up against, you know, so much. You have to stand out, but then utilize these platforms. You use them to your advantage, mm -hmm. you know? So come up with something that translates to TikTok. Mm -hmm. You know, it's short form content. Exactly. So it's not rocket science, you well, know? Well, that's the thing they don't understand. Yeah. And when they when 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 I get through to them, um, it's like, it's like a, an epiphany for them because yeah. they think they gotta, I ain't gonna dance and right. fucking ring light and be <laughs> in my driveway. And it's like, yo, you don't have to, it doesn't even have to be you in the video. Right. Right. You just need to learn how to set off a contest. Exactly. You need to have to set off a moment. Engagement. You, you just get the yeah. right influencer to do yep. the right dance. Yep. Like, yep. you know, the kind of the, the, what does go and what does, you know, the things that do happen mm -hmm. are half of them make sense to me. Yeah. And the other half, I can't wrap my head around. No, that's real. You and, know, and, but ask a 13 year old and they'll explain it to you. And, and yeah. mind you, this information is coming from someone who your fingerprint and your influence is on how many records sold and how many streams. In your career, it, that I that I've been involved, yeah, in? that you've been involved I, in. I don't know. I really don't. Well, know. Would you say maybe what about two hundred two hundred million something like that? I, I mean, masterpiece, hundred. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. In, do <laughs> in dollars, it's 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 probably close to a billion dollars. Okay, between physical yeah. and streaming revenue. So you've been a part of of generating a billion dollars somewhere between seven your... hundred and fifty million and a billion. Yeah. You know? So would so they should probably listen. You know, <laughs> and the fact that I'm still in the game, right? You right. know, I mean, there was probably 400 people that came and went through priority, mm -hmm. and I don't know if there's eight of us mm -hmm. left in the industry. So I'm blessed to yeah. have a son that mm -hmm. you know keeps me uh, yeah. current musically, right. right? And um, and work with people that really have their finger on the pulse. Yeah, I'm curious. Who, who, are who, are who are you feeling? Who are you feeling? I was now? just about to ask the same thing. Who are you feeling now? <laughs> yeah, I mean. They're not new. Okay. I mean, a lot of people. New. I want to know new because we're probably I mean, going like, to last five same years. Shit. Yeah. Maybe like, last 20. Like JID's <laughs> got me fucked up for okay. the last few years. Are you familiar with him? Uh uh. See, that's he's got J. 30, Cole's, 30 J. Cole's million. Cole's yeah. Label, 30 yeah. million monthly listeners. Oh, wow. Check him out. Okay. He's dope. Spillage he's Village out of yeah. the same uh -huh. out of the same J. Cole crew. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, to me, JID is one of the dopest MCs out there. Mm. Obviously, when Corday came out, that, yeah was like yeah. the savior of you know yeah. explaining you know yeah. the old YBN. to the young and mm -hmm. yep so no it, it it if you if we'd have had this conversation in like 17 18 uh -huh. it would have been depressing yeah <laughs> you know what about, it feels i mean like at that time back. you had kevin yeah. gates kevin gates yeah was, kevin gates is kevin dope, mo3 yeah. was killing it for, yeah out of tech before he passed away yeah out of texas i mean there was good art mozzie yeah mm -hmm. yeah like i feel like he's doing his thing yeah sacramento yeah definitely so um, no there's there's i'm impressed with the way mm -hmm kids brought back mm -hmm. some talent yeah you know and yeah. there's some good shit going on out there but good shit yeah. good um, shit so uh, rambles dope mm -hmm. if you're familiar with him Rob i've heard i've Rob heard Wade the name was dope, I yeah think. i mean he's yeah, yeah. 
I've heard Rambo. I've heard the he's name. He's dope. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of but even and he's probably I don't he's probably got 10 million monthlies, I'm guessing. Wow. Like he's wow. kind of big, you okay. know, but a lot of these cats now can say fuck a major. Yeah. Like I've done this. They got like, the I don't, traction. I don't need it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. So Okay, man. Well, that's a lot of good game, brother. Yeah, man. man. I, I I definitely appreciate you coming to the show, man. And no, you know, want to give to you your here. flowers, brother, because you have definitely it. contribute a lot to the culture. You I know? appreciate so it. So now man. people can put a face to you know right, right. to the accomplishment. Yeah, know? yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate the the, the love and yeah, everything. Man. Absolutely. Where where can people find you? To, you know, what what do you want to tell the people where they can tap <laughs> in with you? I'm 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 reclusive. Man. Okay. He doesn't want to be fat. No. Exactly. Uh, I knew that. I just wanted to give you the, <laughs> give you me know, the opportunity. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew no, that. I'm hard to find, man. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if you know how to get at me, you can get at me. <laughs> All know? right, well, I tell you what, if y'all got something and y'all really on something, get it me, I get it him. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There I love you it. go. Hey, so, so I appreciate you yeah, coming, sir, brother, man. man. Appreciate Salute, you, brother. man. And congrats to all your success. Thank you. Thank what you. What you guys have accomplished here is amazing, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I've been watching it, it grow from the beginning. Yeah. And, and you've been supporting as well. Yeah, of course, I appreciate man. that. I enjoy it. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's real. All right, well, hey, that's the Holding Court Podcast. Big Court, Rachel Renee, yeah. producer Ken, Dave Weiner, man, we out of here. I'm holding court, standing trial. Why ain't I see you around back when I was down? Karma's on the way. What goes around comes around. Karma's on the way. There's nothing you could do now. You got to pay.